Hmm. Okay. Now. I hope I still have some some viewers left. Let's see. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is this is so embarrassing. Oh, let me turn that off. This is so embarrassing. But now you can see the quilt. Now let me go to my Hi hey, Michelle, you found me. Okay, great. Sheila, hi. You know, um, I know it's later than I said I would, but you know something? When you're just so close to um, finishing up something, you you just keep going. Just keep going. And um, and that's the way uh you, you have to you have to do it. Otherwise, you will Oops, Daisy. Other, otherwise, you just um, forget. Okay, so here's here's my third session live now. Okay, cool. Yay! Technology. <laughs> it's a heck. So thank you, all my friends. Um, please let me know who you are. Uh, I see Michelle, I see Sheila. Uh, before, when I was trying to figure this out, I I saw uh, Sonia. So I hope she has found me again. But still, that only counts for three people and, and there are still a couple others there. So as you can see, there is the quilt. And it, let's see, this quilt will probably end up somewhere like, what is this? Oh, you know, if you ever wanted to try and figure out, well, how big is it? This is the wonder of, of math when you're, when you quilt, because you know your individual pieces. So these, each of these little blocks is finishing at four by nine. Okay. So if I say, nine one two three four five columns nine times five is 45. the border is five inches so with two borders that's 10 inches so 45 and 10 55 inches across and then when you go down you do the same kind of math um it's probably close to uh, about 66 inches. I'm not gonna figure it out right now. Maybe some enterprising person can do the math for me. So that would be four times 14 plus 10. Uh, and then you'd find out the full length. But you know, that's why God created calculators. This has been a wonderful um, experience. I finished the top. I had thought maybe I might put a second border in, but in, you know, after thinking about it for like 15, 20 minutes, I couldn't find the right color. So, you know, when you're thinking that long, let it go, let it go. It looks beautiful as it is. And I did another little video where I went in a little closer. I'll be posting that too, so that you can see more detail. Uh, on the fabrics. Uh, I'll pull it down, but I think when you see the video, you'll see it better. Now, one of the things that uh, would be the next step, and you know, when you watch those videos on YouTube, um, this is usually when they stop. Actually, they stop when they finish doing a couple of blocks and you never really see how do they get there. Uh, so at this point, you have the completed top. And the next step would be to get get uh, the uh, batting and the backing, get it basted, 
and then get it machine quilted because uh, I don't do hand quilting. Um, my, my hands, I'm sure they can't take that. I have a lovely uh, handy quilter Sweet 16 that I use to do, um, to do that. And uh, let's see. I'm just checking a couple of um, my uh, friends here online. I see Christy. Hi, Christy. And Lucy. Hi, Lucy. And uh, they are so kind. Kathy. Hi, Kathy. They are so kind to tell me how much they like my quilt. I do appreciate that. Um, and, and here's Michelle again, keep it moving. Hmm. All right. Um, so next steps, uh, because uh, as you can tell from the way I've been doing this quilting, I'm not sitting here and watching and letting you watch every every step I take, but I am talking about the process. So one of the reasons why I came up with this dark border, as you see here, and I'm just going to take it down. <laughs> so that you could see the, uh, the color of the border a little better. As you see, it's kind of like a, a wineish red to this border. And a lot of times when you're thinking about, well, what fabric should I have on the border? There are two things to consider. Is the board is the purpose of the fabric on the border to uh, enhance the colors? that are in, in the body of the quilt. And what I mean by that, uh, should it, uh, so like if you have, in this case, a black, a green, and a kind of brown, but it has other color elements in it, you can have the border which collects all those colors and you'd have a beautiful multicolored uh, fabric but maybe that's not the kind of quilt you want to make. In this case, it's a quilt that has, that's trying to feature and highlight the, um, uh, the Beatitudes, the sayings from the Sermon on the Mount. And for something like that, I would like something, I would like the quilt to be more serene. So uh, very, a uh, colorful border would probably not uh, work toward that goal. However, so when that's not the case, you want a border that might take one of the colors um, that are represented in your uh, fabrics and, uh, and highlight that. So in this case, that's why I went for this kind of, of, um, of a uh, dark um, wine, wine red um, brown, um, darker than burgundy and, and use that because I had the red that is in this um, fabric here, but I just went a little darker. So that's how you come up those are the kind of things you think about when you want to um, come up with a quilt. So I'll put it back up, but um, later, and then I'll be also um, posting the uh, video that I made. But one of the questions, Well, oh, thanks, Michelle, for, for clarifying uh, about the keep it moving, um, because she was talking about um, when I was thinking about, oh, do I want one border or two borders? Yeah, that could, you could, you could um, play around with that for hours or days or make a decision, keep it moving. 
And that's exactly what I decided to do. Now, um, when we talk about batting, and that's a good question here. Ladies, let me know, share with your friends. What kind of batting do you like to use? Are you a person who's uh, cotton only? Or do you go for a cotton uh, and polyester blend? Or are you uh, experimenting with some of the new battings like bamboo? How do you like that? I haven't used bamboo yet. I felt it, it feels beautiful. Uh, I've used wool. And uh, I found that was that was great for a wall hanging that I was working on. It um, it just enhanced the machine quilting, but it is a little bit more expensive, and I would only use it for particular um, wall hangings, not for something like this um, that's going to be going on a bed. But uh, let me know. What kind of batting do you use? Personally, I go for the blends and uh, usually 80-20 is the split um, that, that uh, manufacturers uh, use. And I'm a person, I like Pelon. I know there's warm and natural out there and dream. Um, I think that's what it's called. Um, I've tried that a couple of, one or two times, but I, I will get Pellin most of the time and the blend. I just, I like the, the soft feeling that you get when you're using the blend. And I think it also makes it a little warmer if that's, uh, if you're looking for something for a bed by having that blend with the polyester. Uh, so anybody else um, use a, a, a batting? Okay, well, that'll be the next step on this. Uh, and then of course, the backing. One of the things that you should be aware of whether you do your own machine quilting or hand quilting, or if you send it out to um, be done for you by a professional, um, is that uh, you have to be aware of what you're using, what fabric you're using on the back. Oh, excuse me, just a second. Uh, Christy says she usually gets what's on sale and uh, Michelle has used Warm and Natural. They're, like I said, I have nothing against Warm and Natural. Uh, I just started using Pellin a couple of years ago. And before that, I was a Warm and Natural woman. And I just really, I, I it comes down to the feel. Um, and I, I always buy at Joanne because they always have 40 and 50% coupons. And when they have the batting on sale, I'll usually buy like um, three king size uh, uh, because they have the sale and I have a coupon. It brings it down to a manageable um, amount. And those three king size will last me a couple of months. And then by then, well, heck, there'll be more sales. And that's usually how I, um, I go. The backing, however, is the one that always gets me and has gotten me today because I've been very active. I've, I have, uh, I have uh, some uh, backing already in, in my um, stash, but I decided to make a bigger quilt that I had originally thought of doing. Remember I was gonna do the star quilt well, that was going to be only 45 by 45 inches and definitely had backing to do that. However, I ended up making something that was considerably bigger. So, oh, shucks. 
I'm going to have to get a larger piece of backing. How about that? Whoops, excuse me, just a second. And um, well, that's what happens. Um, so I won't be able to do the last part of finishing this quilt today. But I feel I've done I've done a lot. And I did get started on doing the little star quilt before before 10 o'clock. I had it cut out yesterday because I was thinking I might do it. And then this morning I did a little stitching on it. So um, before I, uh, I think later on tonight, after I have dinner, I'm going to do a little of the stitching and then put up the mock-up so that you see where I was going with the star quilt. And then when I get um, the backing, uh, which I did order from fabric.com. By the way, they're having a sale on their wide width fabric, the one that's 108 inches, and it would behoove you to, um, and they have dark colors to try and uh, see if you could get some of that. Um, Sheila, Sheila says that I want, that she wants to be able to do a quilt in a day. You know, let me tell you this. You know how I think a lot of you, you ladies, especially um, now that we're in this kind of pandemic thing, um, and if um, your work schedule uh, is, it, uh, permits it, uh, you can do a quilt in a day. You know how you do a quilt in a day? You plan. You don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to do a quilt in a day. Not really. Because the thing that always gives me takes the most time, and maybe it does for you too, is figuring out what fabrics to use. Now, for some folks, that um, that might be easy because they, as they do a quilt, they buy the fabric. I, however, I have, I have a stash. My stash is humongous. I have, I have stashes everywhere in my. Um, this is my studio here, but I also have it in my office and I have a stash up in my, my bedroom too. So I have enough to do probably uh, a few dozen quilts without buying anything else, a few dozen quilts. So for me, it's going to take time. So planning, what pattern, what fabrics, cutting. Now, if you notice, I did all three steps before I, I started the video. Because is A, it's hard to, to talk and cut. And I, I don't want to get um, myself in a bind. But it's also not very exciting. The exciting part is talking about what we're doing here. So um, I could keep talking and talking and talking and talking. But let me see if I could answer any questions. Um, I see Christy and Michelle have been very kind to say that uh, they found um, my, my um, project today was very helpful. And if you have any questions, you know, please, um, now's the time because, uh, you know, dinner is still, is still on the stove there. I got one of those crock pots where you sit and let it simmer. So there, I have to, I have to wait for it to finish. Michelle asks, are the blocks four and a half by nine and a half and by nine? 
And let me tell you, the, the cut block is four and a half by nine and a half, so that the finish is going to be four by nine. So if you want a quick, uh, and this goes for any quilt, if you want to make a quick quilt, make all the pieces the same size. Then you don't have to worry about how do I make this fit or make that fit. And, um, you know, and that makes it a whole lot easier. Hi, Sheila. Uh, oh, thank you. And you know what, Sheila? I think I will be doing because uh, I will be doing um, more in the future. One of which is going to be uh, the star quilt. I'll show you a little bit about how I do that. And which also incorporates some of my um, uh, verses from the Psalms. So it's a star quilt, but it's also a Psalm quilt. All right. Um, oh, and before I finish, if you were asking about the border, the border, I cut five and a half inches for the border. I always try when you when you have a when you have a quilt and you're trying to figure out well how much border should I put on it? I always I always look at think about half of your of the block and then add about a half an inch more. So if you uh, look at this block, it's going to finish at nine, right? Half of that would be four and a half, and then another half inch would be five inches. So this this uh, border, when it is finished, will be it will finish at five inches. So that's just a a rule of thumb when you're thinking about um, borders. You never want a border that looks too skimpy, right? Um, if you don't have enough fabric to support a, the, a proper size for your border, don't choose that fabric because it will, they will notice how skimpy the border is and not how beautiful 80% of the quilt is. They'll look at that border and not at what's inside. So um, try, try to, uh, Get those kind of rules of thumb in your in your quilting and your part of your quilting habits. Another thing that I found really helpful: get a book. I keep a book where I have I trace out my the quilts that I'm going to be working on. This is the uh, trace of the star quilt that I'm going to be working on. And I use that to figure out how much fabric I want to use, whether I like the placement. It also makes it easier for me to uh, go back and say, now, how did I do this or that? Let me show you one that was <laughs> this one. Let me show you this one. You see this? Now, this is a sketch of a quilt that I made. And it's the Friendship Star. And what makes it interesting is that it's interlocking. You have the top of the second row interlocking with the first row and uh it makes it and unless you trace it out it's hard to figure out well how does that work and the next time i want to do it i have it down on paper what the size of the the stars were and uh, and such 
So have a have a book like this that has um, patterns and and um, I call it like a quilter's Bible. Now, Michelle, you ask a question. Do I sew the vertical side border first or the horizontal or does it matter? You know, for me, it doesn't matter. And I'll tell you why. For me, what I am doing, um, when I am doing a, uh, a, the border for a quilt, I, I look first to see how much, whether the length of one strip can go across that, the, the, the top, right? If the length of the strip can go, can fit the, the width of my, of my quilt, I will put that one on first because then I'm, I'm using the fabric most efficiently. If, as in this case, the, the uh, width was 45 inches, so that was more than the width of, the, uh, of my strip. So I said, okay, but, it, the, but the difference was just a little bit, uh, maybe about five, less than five inches. I never want to cut and put on a little five inches. So I did the length, right? And by doing the length, I still had to piece the border, but it looks better. Now, what was left over was still not enough to add to, to, to the top because now I made it even longer by an additional 10 inches. So I had to make sure that I had enough fabric so that I could cut another strip. Another strip. So I had to have two strips in addition to the four strips. So that's six strips. So I had two strips to piece for the length, for the vertical, and two pieces to piece for my horizontal. And, uh, and as you can see, you could barely see where I put the, the join because when I do a join for this, I make it really, really small, um, almost um, a 0 0.1, uh, a 1.0 on my sewing machine. So that is very tight. Uh, I think that answers your question. I, I essentially, I go vertical with whichever way the, my uh, fabric is gonna be used the best. I know some people like to cut on the um, uh, along the length of your of your of your fabric, um, so that there's less give. Uh, I can never do that. Um, I'd be buying so much fabric and just cutting off uh, just a few uh, inches um that it made no that would make no sense for me okay um any other questions ladies because we're coming up on 30 minutes now and um and what i wanted to do was have a little time to work on the star quilt and i'll show you the mock-up um later tonight um hopefully you'll be <laughs> still interested in watching this when I put up the mock-up, it doesn't matter. Um, I will post a picture um, and um, when later on, if you if you didn't catch it. So you won't miss anything. Um, but you know what I would appreciate? If you can put in the comments either now or later, um, what would you like me to do another uh, tutorial on? because I can be very specific. I've done 
almost everything. I, I can't really talk too much about um, applique, not one of my things. But uh, if you would like me to do another tutorial on a, on a quilt or a technique that uh, you'd like, or if you'd like to um, talk uh, about the, uh, the Sweet 16 that I have and the other new machines that are available so that you could do your own home, um, your, your own machine quilting at home. Ah, binding. Oh, yes, that is a great subject. So, you know, uh, so Christy, I want you to hold, hold me to that. Um, uh, send me a, uh, a private message or something like, or, or something so that I remember that I should do a session on binding because that will be really helpful. I've learned a whole lot about binding since I started quilting. So ladies, um, uh, hi, Jean. Oh, I hope you, you were able to see uh, most of this, but uh, all of the other sessions will be uh, available on prayer quilts, uh, and also Prayer Quilts by Rosie. So you could watch it either, either way. Um, and I'm also going to put it on my YouTube channel. Did you know I have a YouTube channel? Yes, I do. And on the YouTube channel, I also have some other tutorials. Uh, I've done some tutorials with uh, some of my machine quilting techniques. Uh, you could watch that video. Um, Actually, that's a pretty good video. It's um, it shows the, uh, some of the techniques I've done with uh, my machine. That'd be very interesting uh, if you're thinking about it. So, YouTube channel is is Prayer Quilts by Rosie because you know you got to keep pushing the name. <laughs> okay, ladies, it's because I don't think there's any gentlemen out there. Uh, forgive me if you're there, but if you are there, let me know. I think I'm going to sign off now. And um, like I said, if you have some ideas on what you'd like me to tackle, just go right ahead and uh, and I'd be happy. Oh, wait, you know what? While I have here, let me just type in here. Um other tutorials and I'm just saying here where you could find it on my YouTube channel. Um, okay, so there you go, uh, Sheila says, thank you very much. You're quite welcome. And I guess that's about it. Happy New Year. This has been a day. It's just about five o'clock now. And um, I don't know about you, but I hear the dinner bell calling me. Oh, Jean is in South Carolina. Hey there. My niece has been going to school at the university. She loves it down there. So hello, Jean. Okay, ladies, I know you're you're watching from Texas and Connecticut and Maryland. Um, probably a few other states that I can't remember because my mind is fried. And I've just enjoyed the day. So if you've enjoyed the day too, let me know. Drop a little um, comment there. And I will um, remember to put these things. Oh, and so promises to keep. I'm going to finish this quilt and show you how it came out. And I'm going to do a mock-up of the star quilt so you see what that looks like. But I'm going to say bye for now. Have a blessed evening. 
first evening of the new year. Be well, be safe, and so happy.